What does a beginner in core engineering should keep in mind while starting their career in robotics and AI? We'll see. Robotics and AI both are really incredibly huge fields. Better to start small, better to start simple. Let's take an example of a mechanical engineer. How, how would a mechanical engineer look at a robot? He would look at its physical structure. He would look at its uh, physical properties like its mass, center of mass, center of inertia, every single possible thing that can help or that robot possesses. These properties of robot from the point of view from, of, of a mechanical engineer can be translated into a CAD design. Start with a simple CAD design if you're a mechanical mechanical engineer or in a related field. As simple as that. Apart from that, let's talk about electrical engineers or electronics engineers who mostly work with uh, microprocessors, microcontrollers. You should start with simply designing a processor which can be programmed. Let's take example of some other field, let's say computer science or information technology. People who are in CS or IT can work into determining how a code is able to be executed onto a microprocessor or a controller and how those uh, programs are actuating a mechanical process. Property. Robotics and AI are not isolated. They are a combination of all the branches that you can possibly imagine. That's what makes it so interesting, difficult, yet sometimes overwhelming for beginners. One more thing beginners can uh, do just to keep yours updated with the current trends. It's not that you don't have to research papers, but at least habit that you can learn something. जो समझ में आए उसको इंप्लीमेंट करो अगर ना समझ में आए तो फिर गूगल करो लेट्स टेक एडवांटेज ऑफ टैट जीपीटी एंड अदर लार्ज लैंग्वेज मॉडल्स टू हेल्प यू अंडरस्टैंड दोस कॉन्सेप्ट्स ब्रीफली सो दैट्स वन थिंग but how can you keep yourself updated with uh, these uh, current trends? First is, of course, research papers. Second is newspapers. You will see the news about uh, some sewage cleaning robots, some prosthetic robots, some mountain climbing robots, any kind of robots around you which are being featured on the newspapers or LinkedIn uh, posts, wherever. Just try to uh, see what those applications are, how people are applying their knowledge of robotics into these uh, applications. That's uh, very important. Uh, let's talk about problem solving approach. Don't just try to revolve around a technical step. One problem that people faced after the release of ChatGPT or OpenAI APIs is the introduction of saturated space in AI. Everyone started using OpenAI's API and building an OpenAI wrapper around it, which is kind of not necessary in all the cases. When we talk about robotics, try to implement simple robotics projects, blinking project, then try to understand that, okay, if I can uh, make this LED blink, what else can I do? Let's say uh, open a door with uh, the exact same logic. Can I do that or not? If I can open a door with that logic, can I uh, build something that senses a human's presence in front of the door and then open it? Try to learn about sensors, try to learn how sensors are helping to actuate the door or any other actuator. You see where I'm going? The thing is, you need to understand the problem is around you, but solution needs to come up from you not from um, any other complicated technology that we feel that is buzzing around when it comes to automatic door opening machine or automatic uh, door opener it's not really about ai it's not really about large language models it's just about how we robustly uh, capture some data and try to use that it's as simple as that Something that is most important yet most underrated amongst robotics beginners is the ability to get a mentor. A good mentor can actually help you progress in your career which you cannot even imagine. It has taken me like two to three years to be somewhere where with a mentor I could have reached there within a few weeks and I am not even exaggerating. It is completely true. Try to find a good mentor for yourself and once you have found one, just try to build upon your own skills with the similar mindset. These mentors can be anyone. These can be your faculties, these can be your seniors, these can be people who you look up to basically. Well, just to put up a brownie point, let's talk more about everyone's universities will have some sort of clubs, some sort of student chapters where robotics is the core. Let it be mechanical, let it be electrical or computer science student. Everyone is capable of joining that group. Not to just learn from that group, but also to find a group for yourself. A robot is not built by one person. It's never built by one person, trust me. That's where a team comes into picture. Well, will you just uh, put your best friend into a team or someone who is really interested into robotics? Even though he's not your best friend, but someone who is really keen into learning about robots, who is keen about building something, will you take him, right? So that's where comes uh, the bonding part. You should bond with those people who are like-minded, 
try to keep your circle try to surround yourself with people who are like minded and have similar goals as you do how to find these people then try to join your clubs try to join uh, robotics student chapters in your college well of course once you join these clubs you will find a lot of boring projects as well like some projects which may last for year two year five year projects really long term projects of course you will see them but the best thing about those projects is not that project itself but the people who are around those projects people who are working on it try to ask them that what problem does this project solve how is this helping someone right even if it is as small as this understanding uh, human movement correct even if those small steps that you are taking right now are going to help you build something really incredible very soon just building these projects is not enough you need to share your projects to your network to your faculty to your seniors to your friends around you so that you can get constructive or any sort of feedback around it don't be afraid of getting a critical feedback as well how to share your projects post your projects on github on youtube on linkedin then share those links on your whatsapp groups with your friends with your faculty members that see this is what i made today see this is what i'm working on right now what do you think how does it make you feel right ask them the questions the hard questions that how can i improve it this is what we usually do in our entrepreneurship journey as well if we ask them uh, i have literally uh, went to a professor and asked him that okay sir if i have built this thing uh, for uh, how much will it be valuable to you how much will this product be useful to you how much will you be paying it for right so this is from my entrepreneurship uh, point of view but from a robotics engineer's point of view or a problem solver's point of view think of how your product or how your project is helping people gain value in any sort of way post your projects on github to get amazing reviews from people around you feedback is extremely important of course in the beginning you will not be making big projects but don't be shy around it you will be making projects that's most important even the smallest projects will have a constructive feedback around it please consider those feedbacks important and uh, try to improve upon it those feedbacks are going to become the cornerstones for you to move forward so guys and girls everything that we discussed so far is not a hardcore thing it's a really very vague road map which you can follow but at the end of the day whatever interests you just try to look for it you will need to have a lot of iterations that this is working for me this is not working for me and please never feel demotivated into doing that try every single thing that is humanly possible in your college and after trying after testing few things see what's your true calling right just once you understand what's your calling try to pursue that as a passion and once you start pursuing it you will never feel tired in your life again at the end of the day it's totally up to you what do you want to learn what do you want to become what do you want to upskill yourself in never force anything onto yourself try to go with the flow and see where the flow takes you